of the workshop. And I will take this time to actually thank all my co-organizers. So Sebastian, Sachapol, Jason, and uh, Julian. Thank you very much. Okay, sorry, okay. I want to yes. just quickly introduce you. Sure. Uh, now we have a talk by Omri Weinstein. He's at the Hebrew University and at the Columbia University. And uh, he will talk about very recent work on accelerating the MWU framework for packing LPs. Thanks, Monica, and to all the organizers. And thanks for everyone uh, for sticking out uh, for the last talk. Uh, so as Monica said, I'll, I'll talk about a very recent, in fact, ongoing work with uh, Cedric and Sorachai, who's sitting here, um, which develops kind of a new approach, or more precisely, a new primitive for speeding up uh, various long-standing network design problems, which are currently stuck on uh, cubic, or more precisely, MN uh, time. And feel free to interrupt. I'm Israeli, so there's no, uh, no need to be uh, for any politeness. Okay, so um, oh, that not, uh, oh. Okay, so, so as we know, uh, many network design uh, problems can be formulated as um, fractional packing uh, linear programs, albeit of exponential size. Uh, so some notable examples are uh, multi-commodity flows, matching problems, standard cut problems, subgraph connectivity, linear arrangements, essentially any problem which asks to find a subgraph with uh, satisfying a certain uh, uh, property. And indeed, uh, if you try to write, write down the explicit linear size linear program for these problems, using the, uh, the graphical Laplacian, then um, they will not be positive linear programs, which will be a crucial property that we'll use uh, in combinatorial kind of augmenting style path uh, algorithms. So you really need the, ex the implicit LP formulation to get a positive LP. And the running example uh, for the talk will be the K commodity flow problem where, so what do we have here? We get a directed uh, capacitated graph and a set of K demand pairs, right? So the blue pairs, the red pairs, the green pairs, the yellow pairs. Uh, and you should think of K as huge, right? It's potentially N squared kind of paths, right? So this is the setting in this talk. So there are, uh, in the realistic case is, you know, K is, is very large. And our goal is to route the maximum amount of flow between all the legal demand pairs while respecting the edge capacities. Does that make sense? No. Okay. So if you think about it, the natural packing LP for this problem has a variable for every path, for every potential path between a legal demand pair, right? Every legal red path, every legal blue path, and so forth, right? So we have obviously an exponential constraint matrix, uh, exponential number of variables. And each variable denotes kind of the amount of flow routing through a specific path, through any one of the potential paths. That's gonna be important, make sense, yeah? And our goal is to route the maximum amount of flow respecting these edge capacities. Thanks, thanks a lot. Um, the dual, okay, so the dual of this, uh, the dual program is essentially a minimum fractional cut problem where the goal is to assign non-negative edge weights uh, so that every path, the length of every path with respect to this 
length function or weight function is at least one. Right, so if you think of W as the integral uh, solution, it's just an indicator of a cut, right? So all we're asking here is to find, basically, if W is just the indicator of a cut, then this constraint means it's a natural certificate of a bottleneck in the graph, right? It means that routing one unit of flow between any demand pair, any legal demand pair, it consumes one unit of volume in the graph. Questions about this? So this is quite standard, right? The primal and dual uh, programs. Uh, and notice that the primal here, so the, you know, the primal here is a very fat matrix, right? It's, it has it's an exponential size matrix. We have exponentially many variables because we have exponentially many paths. But the dual has only um, m variables, right? Because the weight function is just assigning a non-negative weight to the edges. That, that's going to be crucial for the algorithm. Okay, and as Cyan and uh, uh, Grandma's already showed us uh, this week, earlier this week, what's kind of interesting is that uh, despite this LP having exponential size, right, and Gargan Konigman uh, with an improvement by Fleischer showed that it's nevertheless possible to design low accuracy with independent algorithms for this problem, which are quite efficient uh, based on a primal dual version of the multiplicative weight uh, updates uh, method. Um, and, <clears throat> okay, so this is what, what uh, we're going to show in a second. And I just want to say that it's quite subtle because for high accuracy K commodity flow, even for two commodities, we cannot hope to beat matrix multiplication time Okay, because the problem is equivalent to general LPs. Okay, so it's really subtle. So it, it's kind of, uh, it's intriguing that for, for low accuracy algorithms, positivity of the LP or packing version of the LP buys us a lot, but in the high accuracy regime, we don't know how to exploit this. Okay, so this is just a comment. Another comment is that if K is small, so if we have only, you know, 10 commodities, then uh, there's a, a very clever approach by Sherman to get faster run times using some proximal gradient descent uh, method with a very clever uh, mirror prox uh, um, uh, optimization method. Any questions till now? All right, so to describe the Gar Kahneman algorithm, let me assume throughout the talk that we have unit capacities. It's really not going to complicate uh, uh, things, so everything's going to. Extend, yeah. Just a quick question about the previous slide. Uh, so the running time does not depend on K? Okay, so we always pay, all the algorithms I'll mention, pay uh, an extra output oh, size okay. time, which is Kn. And if you think about it, this is tight because you can easily generate an example of ST, even just one commodity where you have K parallel paths, and you'll have to pay K in time, just to write down the answer. Okay, so this is for, so this is like necessary. M times K is, you know, you can possibly hope to do uh, slightly better. Okay. More questions? Okay. What's so then, yeah. Are you returning a fractional flow in the end, or an integral flow? Uh, can it's you a, repeat the question? So the question was, am I returning a fractional flow or an integral flow? It's going to be a fractional flow. Yeah. Going to be basically um, the amount of flow routed on each. But the output is still limited by Kn. Uh, yes. Uh, is that right? Yeah, I believe so, right? We. Yeah, okay, so we have for, for all K demand pairs, I'm going to just. Uh, uh, I'm just going to describe uh, the flow routed on the on one path. No, but it's. I mean, flow data in time that you really need to open in. Yeah. Okay. 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 So, so the claim is that there is an instance where there's a unique path between every demand pair, and they're you know just describing the flow routed on this particular path. You know, there are k parallel uh, k edge disjoint paths, so you'll have to pay. Kn. This is just a justification that there are instances where you the output size is k times n. That's it. Right. Okay. okay. But yeah. I just have to ask you, you never lose 
larger. It's a lower bound, not an upper. Yeah, it's a lower bound. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay. It's okay. All right, so we're going to assume unit capacities, and it's, it's really everything is going to go through for general capacities. I'll try to point this out. So the gar kahneman algorithm is going to uh, maintain a set of weights, okay? So a, a, a candidate dual solution, okay? And it's going to update those, those, this weight function, and it's going to make, uh, in every iteration, it's going to make an oracle call to the following key subroutine, which we call the Minro uh, Oracle, and we basically saw this in Gramos's talk uh, yesterday, uh, which asks to return, given the exponential path matrix, it, it requires to return, and the current weight vector, it requires to return the row of the matrix that minimizes the inner product with this weight uh, vector. Does that make sense? So if the path matrix, in, in the case of multi-commodity flow, P denotes every row here is a path, and W is a non-negative Weight function, what is the min row oracle computing? Just the shortest path, right? Does that make sense? But rows here could be for general network design problems, they could be cuts, matchings, subgraphs, anything uh, you want. Okay, so it's very, the min row oracle is a very general uh, primitive. Okay, so here's the full, and it kind of, yeah, so we kind of measure the, the intuitive for why, you, the intuition for why you need this oracle call is, it's going to measure the quality of the candidate dual solution. And here's the full algorithm, okay? So, so what does the algorithm do? Given the K commodities, K demand pairs, we start with an empty flow and with a weight function, which is uniformly one on each edge. Okay, so we assign an edge uh, weight of one to each edge. And we'll maintain this increasing, monotone increasing function. It's going to be important. And we do the following. So as long as they're not, a super congested edge is not as long as we have an edge which is not super congested, okay, where congestion is just the amount of flow routing through the edge. In the capacitated case, it's just normalized by capacity. Is that clear? So the congestion is just the amount of flow routing through an edge. As long as we, there is some, uh, you know, uh, as long as there's no super congested edge, we just call the Minro Oracle we compute a shortest path with respect to the current weight function. Okay, so we compute a weighted shortest path with respect to current weights, and we route one unit of flow along this shortest path. Yes? Okay, so we just compute the shortest path, we augment one unit of flow on this path, this finishes the primal update, and then for every edge on this path, okay, but so, so we find the shortest path P in the teeth iteration. Uh, and for every edge in this path, we're going to bump up the weight of this edge by e to the epsilon or 1 plus epsilon. It's going to be, I'm going to use the two interchangeably. Does that make sense? So you're bumping up the weights only on edges in the shortest path, okay? Which intuitively models the fact that we want to route, we want to augment flow through relatively uncongested paths. Does that make sense? Okay. That's it. So this is the algorithm, you just repeat that. So every time you compute a shortest path, you route one unit of flow and you bump up the weights along these paths. That's it. But uh, how do you, so when you return the final flow, do you need to like? Yeah, 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 I'm gonna talk about it, but that's the algorithm, okay? So, uh, okay, so I'm actually going to return the final flow Scaled by something, so I'm getting to this, okay? So, yeah. Sorry, then should it be while there is a congested edge do something, or? No, 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 so as long as you haven't reached the threshold congestion, ah, okay. you, you, you still keep going. More questions? Okay, so just one implication, one important property of this multiplicative update rule is that Observe that weights are always exponential in the congestion, right? Because every time we increase the weight of an edge, what does it mean? It means that it was augmented by one unit of flow, right? So this will mean that we also contribute at least one to the congestion. Okay. So here's a six line and completely self-contained analysis uh, for this algorithm. Uh, based on a beautiful note that uh, Sorachai wrote a couple years 
back and I really recommend uh, reading it. Um, okay, so <coughs> it's actually going to be four lines with a cheat sheet. So, um, okay, so the first observation is that, as Daniel said, the f remember that the, the algorithm never, the Gar-Kahneman never maintains explicit feasibility, right? We never enforce feasibility. And indeed, the final flow may violate some capacity, right? So we'll have to scale down the, the returned flow by the maximum congestion in order to maintain that, to respect the edge capacities, right? That, that's, that's always gonna be feasible. And the claim is that the maximum congestion is not too bad. So, you know, it's log m over epsilon square. So we won't have to scale down the solution by too much. It will only lose like a log n factor. Why is that? Well, the maximum congestion is at least that. Why? Because this was our termination condition, right? By definition, this, we stopped when we congest an edge. But the claim is that it's not much more than that because the last iteration cannot overshoot this by much, right? It's only routing one unit of flow. Okay, so this is an easy, an easy fact. Yes. Does everyone agree that the maximum congestion, this was our termination condition, the last iteration we cannot overshoot this by much. Okay, so the main claim is that the scale down flow, which is feasible, is not only feasible, but it's also one minus epsilon optimal, okay? And here's a four line proof uh, uh, with, a, with a cheat sheet, okay? So <clears throat> it's based on kind of the standard multiplicative weight analysis. So let's define a potential function phi t which measures, which just sums up the current, uh, the sum of the current weights. So this is kind of the quality of the dual solution maintained by the, um, by the, by, by the algorithm, right? So notice that once again, this may, may not be a feasible dual solution because to be feasible, those weights need to respect the shortest path that every path has large length greater than one, right? That was the dual constraint, right? But if we take this potential, the sum of weights, and we scale it down by the shortest path, by the weight of the shortest path, then by definition, we're, we're respecting the dual constraints, right? Okay, this is pretty important because, so this is exactly why we route through shortest path, through the min row oracle at each round. Because we want, this is the cheapest way to scale down the dual to be feasible, right? Is, is that clear? That's, that's quite, quite important. What, what's feasible? The, the, uh, what I'm saying is that this, this, uh, this, the sum of weights here, which is the dual objective because we're in the unit capacity case, it's a candidate solution, but it's not necessarily feasible. Right. Be, but the scaled down set of weights is feasible. What, by is, the, what is scaled down weight? Scaled by dt? No, scaled by the weight of the shortest path. Yeah. Okay, so dt is a feasible dual solution. Does everyone? Agree? Because we just took... No, but, I mean, DT is a number, isn't it? It's the value of the... Yes, the value of the... It's the, it's the value. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Say it. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Everyone agrees? Uh, that's exactly why we route through shortest paths. Okay? All right. And now the, the claim I'll use is that because weights evolve multiplicatively, right? The update rule to the weights is multiplicative. Well, this implies that also the potential evolves multiplicatively. Okay, and this is where I'm gonna use the cheat sheet so you, you can increase the number of lines of the proof by one, maybe. Uh, so, so if you don't see this, so, so if you don't see this proof, what is phi t plus one? It's just, by definition, it's the sum of all the weights in the teeth round of all the edges. Okay, so the edges that do not belong to the shortest path remain the same, right? And the edges that do belong to the shortest path get bumped up by, I mean, e to the epsilon times wt. But e to the epsilon is essentially one plus epsilon, right? So now I can take this one and throw them back here so I get the original weight function, wt of e. This is nothing else but phi t, right? Plus, I have the epsilon times all the edges in the shortest path times their weight, right? 
so now, can everyone see this? Okay, so, so now let me just take phi t out of the, um, as a common denominator, and I'll have this plus, right? Uh, epsilon times this sum, okay? All the edges in the shortest path times W, E, okay? But what is this thing? What is the sum of weights divided by phi t? This is exactly dt, right? This is exactly the quality of the dual solution. So does everyone agree? So this is exactly phi t, one, uh, you know, phi t times e to the epsilon over dt, right? And again, I'm, I'm using, I'm using the, the fact that one plus epsilon is roughly e to the epsilon. Okay, everyone agrees? So this is the only, so if you believe this fact, we're essentially done, why? Because, so if you iterate this potential, uh, you know, iteratively until the final iteration, using the fact that initial potential was m, right? Why? Because the sum of weights was one. So this is the initial potential, and then you just iterate this potential. You have the potential is upper bounded by e to the sum of e over dt. So far, so good. Okay, and then you can take out always the minimum dual solution you've ever encountered through iterations, right? Just take it out of the sum and take the epsilon out of the sum. And now what is this? What, is, what are we doing? We're summing one unit of flow for each iteration. So what is this thing? This is exactly the quality of the unnormalized flow, right? Because this, Right, every, every iteration will augment one unit of flow. So this is the quality of the primal solution, right? Yes, this is just the quality of the unscaled, unnormalized solution. Does everyone agree to, to this? Okay, that's it. So we have an upper bound of the potential. On the other hand, the, I claim that the potential is always at least the maximum edge, edge weight. That's clear, right? The potential is the sum of weight, so it's at least the maximum weight. Right? And the maximum weight, remember, we argue it's also, the weights are always exponential in the congestion. We already said this several times. So it's just exponential in E to the max congestion. Yes? And that's it. So now we have an upper bound and a lower bound on the, on the potential. So if you combine the two and take logs, what do you get? You get that log of this, which is E times the max congestion, is at most log m plus this thing, e times the primal divided by the dual, yes? Okay, so let's divide by the left-hand side. Okay, so I just divide by the left-hand side, I get one because I, okay. What happens to this term when I divide by epsilon times the max congestion? The epsilon disappears and I get the scale down. Now it's a, prim it's a feasible primal solution divided by the dual, plus log m over max congestion. Yes, sorry, it should be epsilon, sorry. It should be epsilon max congestion, right? And that's it. This thing is one, right? And this thing, what, it, what was the max congestion, remember? It was log m over epsilon squared. And this is exactly, so what, do you, what happens here when you divide by log m over epsilon squared, you get exactly epsilon. And that's it, that's the proof, why? Because what have we shown here? I claim that this is equivalent, or at least it implies this, why? This just says that the duality gap is very close to one, is one minus epsilon. Yeah. If you want a formal proof, just take d min here, times here, there's always an upper bound on opt, right? Any dual solution is an upper bound on opt. That's it, no, nothing hidden under the rug, this is a, a really, I really like this, uh, this proof. Okay, so this is the, yeah. Is this equivalent to the proof uh, using the experts or is that? Yeah, it's, it's ba okay. It is, except there are some close specific uh, details here, but it's basically uh, uh, trying to repeat the experts uh, proof. The, so the multiplicative, the vanilla experts analysis uses exactly this potential. Yeah, so we basically charge each of violation kind of to the, only thing here is using the min, no, the feasibility issue, which doesn't 
really occur in the vanilla multiplicative way. Okay. Okay. What, so this was correctness. What about the iteration count? Is very simple, right? Uh, so the number of iterations, I claim it's at most the congestion because every iteration we congest by one, at least one edge, right? Every iteration routes one unit of flow through at least one edge. So what will happen after m log m over epsilon squared iteration? The total congestion on all the edges is this. So there must be an edge which is saturated, which has congestion at least log m over epsilon squared. And this was our termination condition. Yeah. Okay, good. So now the question, what is the overall cost of the gar kahneman algorithm? And unfortunately, implementing the Min-Row Oracle or the shortest path, it it's, seems very expensive, right? Naively, you would need to, so what would you do? You would maybe maintain a single source shortest path tree, right, using Dijkstra from every demand or from every vertex, right? Because you, you have to cycle through the demands to find the, the, the minimum distance, and only then will you query for to report the path, right? I mean, I, at least I don't really see a way to, to avoid this, all right? And so Fleischer got this down from m times n, basically, to O of m per, amortized per iteration using two very clever observations. The first one is actually very, very simple. Her first observation was that nothing changes in the analysis if we replace, if we report epsilon approximate shortest path instead of exact shortest path. Why is that? Because where, where did we use the shortest path? All we used is that when we scale by shortest path, it's feasible. So that's going to be epsilon feasible. It's the, that, was you, a, that was an even earlier paper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's similar. The, the more clever observation, which I won't be able to, to, uh, to prove, but we'll also use it in our framework, is that Fleischer observed that you can group, okay, you can repeat the same guard kahneman algorithm, except you can group the multiplicative weight iterations into epochs where in each epoch, each epoch is associated with a set of weights, let's say weights between you know, 100 and 110, okay? And the goal, the goal is to clear the demands in this epoch. What does it mean? You just need to repeatedly report shortest paths with paths inside of, of length inside this range. Okay, so if uh, a length of the path is outside this range, it doesn't participate in the epoch. So you just need to carve out just to you know, pick out, keep picking out shortest paths in, with length in this range, and repeatedly update and bump up the weights on them. Okay, this is, I claim that this is equivalent. It's not. It's it's equivalent to the correct in terms of correctness to the Gar Koningman. What does this buy you? Okay, so what what? So first of all, is this clear? Uh, what I'm saying. All I'm doing is instead of reporting shortest path repeatedly. I'm just saying I'm dividing the iteration into epoch defined by ranges of weights. And your goal in a certain epoch is to clear, is to just report all the shortest path and update them as long as their weight is in, inside this range. Okay. I think correctness doesn't change. And what she proved is that the number of epochs is bounded by log of epsilon squared. Now, what does it buy her? What, 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 what does this epoch version buy you? So I won't, I won't get into details, but basically what it buys you is the following. It allows you to amortize the cycling through demand. So the claim is that look at a shortest path tree. If this demand, um, if the shortest path, if the distance between demand, this demand and any other demand is outside this range, I claim it will never get into this range. You, you can skip it forever during this epoch, right? Why? Because weights always increase. So if it's not in the range, it will never be in the range. Okay, so the intuition is that, yeah, you'll maintain those Dijkstra shortest path, but you'll only cycle through demands once per demand pair in each epoch. Okay, so the total runtime of maintaining those shortest path using Dijkstra is going to be m times n instead of the total time, yeah? And this was, so the amortized time will be O of m. Okay, I know this was fast, and sorry, but this is not the main thing, so, okay, so basically the epoch-based view allows you to amortize the cost of cycling through finding the closest pair, right, because you have to find the closest pair is already a, a problem that seems to, to be very expensive. Fleischer shows that monotonicity plus the epoch-based view allows you to cycle only once per epoch through, through each uh, pair, okay, so. I, I think Fleischer just addressed multi-colliding flow perhaps, but I think, but I think what 
You're suggesting maybe. Are you suggesting that the epoch analysis applies to a broader set of packing problems? That, that, that's also true. Yeah, and we'll in fact we'll use this. Uh, so, okay. But the point is that getting O of M amortized cost per min row per shortest path oracle call. You know, it was, this was the way to get it. Okay, because otherwise I don't see how to I don't I don't see how to get it without without this. Okay, so this, if you believe and digest what I've said, this recovers right. So you have the the Garconi, the the runtime I claimed, right? M iterations or m log m iterations of multiplicative weight times O of m amortized cost per iteration, right? So this is m squared. Okay, so the next development in 2010 was due to Madri, who showed that the cost per iteration can be improved for implementing the min row, the, you know, the, the shortest path oracle can be further improved for O of M to O of N, which sounds really, you know, uh, incredible. And indeed, what Fleischer didn't use is basically she, she well, she amortized the, the cycling through demands, but she never used the, the decremental nature of the problem, the fact that weights, she basically solved from scratch. She just ran Dijkstra from scratch using those shortest path trees. And indeed, that was main, uh, Madri's main, main observation that the problem that the min row is solving in the context of the multiplicative weight algorithm is a decremental shortest path problem. In fact, it's incremental, right? Because weights increase, but you can easily reduce it to decremental, okay? And the upshot is that decremental shortest path is a very well-studied problem, as Aaron showed us, um, uh, using, okay, so if you have, if you want to solve the decremental single source problem on low diameter ball. We have a classic ES, uh, you know, data structure, the ES trees, which solve it uh, uh, very fast, right? So, and indeed, uh, I mean, this application was a main driver for the explosion in works in recent years by Thatcher and uh, Aaron and all these uh, folks here uh, for studying decremental shortest path problems, okay? All right. But the claim is that, again, this is, ES trees are not enough here because, again, you, what will you do? You can maintain an ES tree for every demand pair decrementally. That's way too expensive, right? Because you cannot afford to do that. So what is Madri's main idea? Again, I'm, I'm gonna devote one minute to it. But basically, Madri says, look, uh, um, let me guess the length of the shortest path. Let's call it L. And let me sample, well, so what Madri does, basically he samples a set of L leaders, random leaders in the graph. And his observation is that if the specific shortest path between that, you know, that you want to report, if this shortest path hits, if this is a hitting set for this shortest path, as long as the shortest path hits this randomly random set of leaders, this is similar to the Torpzvik uh, argument, then, then we're good. Then if we maintain a shortest path tree, an ES tree, not from all the vertices, but only from the leaders, we'll report this path, right? Because all we need is a hitting set for this, for the shortest path. We don't need to report an arbitrary shortest path. There's this one shortest path. As long as we hit it, we're good. Okay, and then he does exponential guessing on L, and okay, but does that make sense roughly? So but is all this on undirected graphs? Yeah. Uh, Madri is on undirected. The the the, the right the, the framework for directed as well. Uh, but then okay, I guess that yes, the monotonicity is still yeah okay. Yeah, I think it's directed as well. Actually, I guess you know the monotonicity is not about undirected or directed. The question is the data structures can change, right? The distance of yeah, the data structure. So multiplicative weight updates, like interior point method, they don't just, they're oblivious sure, to sure. direct there. Yeah. But you're asking about the specific speed up for the min row problem, for the, yeah, for the shortest path. Okay, so it's, it's it also handles directed. I didn't remember that. Okay, and this is the state of the art on the problem, right? OMN is currently over epsilon squared. This is the state of the art. And Madri argues it's, you know, it's kind of a natural barrier. Um, I won't get into this, but this is, uh, this is the status. And MN is actually the state of the art uh, for similar reasons uh, on not just multi-commodity flow, but many other 
network design problems, uh, some of which appeared in a follow-up paper by Fleischer and uh, by Sorcha and Touchable and s several people. Okay, so MN is kind of where a lot of network design algorithm problems are, are stuck. It's going to be relevant soon. Okay, uh, and, and I just want to make, make sure. So Madri doesn't, so Madri and Fleischer, they never touch the iteration complexity, right? All their goal is to improve the cost per iteration, right? This, this was the main uh, advancement. And the starting point of our work, which is kind of the, the main conceptual contribution, is to show that if you replace the min row, the shortest path oracle, with a somewhat stronger oracle, then the iteration complexity of the gar kahneman algorithm reduces dramatically, okay? So, uh, so to describe this oracle, uh, it will operate in this epoch-based um, analysis. So remember, what is the multiplicative gar kahneman algorithm with the epochs? Every epoch has, you just need to clear all the demands. And the natural way to do this is just decrementally calling the shortest path oracle, right? Yes, does that make sense? Okay, so instead of uh, calling the shortest path oracle, or which needs to report a path in the range of the epoch, yes, and routing one unit of flow on it, we're going to call an oracle which is called a uh, MSP oracle. We're going to ask the oracle to return not a single shortest path, but a maximally disjoint set of paths with weights in this range. So I was too lazy to draw figures, but basically, you know. So we want the oracle to return to us um, a maximally disjoint set of paths, which is a packing for this, uh, for this uh, way. So in, the, in what sense is it maximal? It's maximal in the sense that if you look at the residual graph, any path which has length in this range will intersect one of these blue paths. Is it clear what? Arc, arc intersect or? Edge intersect, yeah, edge intersect. Okay, this is going to be absolutely crucial in a second. So does, does the oracle make sense? So instead of call, returning a single short path, you want a short path packing. So you want to return all of the a maximally disjoint set of packing. Okay. All right, so in the min row, it's, it's a very abstract, uh, clean abstract problem. The min row required to return one row with a small inner product, right? So now you require to return a maximally dis arc disjoint or support disjoint edges with small inner products. It's a completely abstract linear algebra primitive, right? You can think of it. This is one way to, to generalize it to other problems. It's only for a single commodity, this is just blocking flows, basically? Ex okay, you're, you're one, one, not even one slide, one bullet a, ahead of me. Yeah, so just a sec. Okay, so the, the key, uh, okay, the, the first, the, the main theorem is that if you implement the epoch-based uh, multiplicative weight algorithm with this oracle, with the packing oracle, the min row packing oracle, then you only need root m iteration, and this is tight, okay? So this is, this is optimal. Um, and I just want to say, okay, so now you might... Specifically, uh, the dependence on epsilon remains uh, one over epsilon squared? It's currently one over epsilon cubed, oh, okay. reducing it from one over epsilon to the four to one over epsilon cubed is already non-trivial. Okay. Reducing it further to one over epsilon squared, we believe it's possible, but it's it's it, we have bigger problems in life. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> right now, so <laughs> okay, so I'll, we'll see. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll see. If, remind me this joke, and then I'll. Uh, okay. So uh, okay. So before I prove this, uh, as David said. Um, so you might worry that this oracle is super expensive, much more expensive to implement than the min row, right? But, um, but here's a prototypical proof of concept that you, you can actually do the packing problem. You can implement the packing oracle in the same cost that you can implement the, sh the single oracle. And it's exactly a blocking flows, basically the ST min cut. So if you need to, so the claim is that, okay, so how do you complete, compute the, the minimum cut in an ST, the minimum ST cut? Just invoke a single call to max flow, right? That's obvious. But the claim is that the flow returned by the max flow algorithm, which we now know how to do in linear time, in near linear time, you can collect all the cuts uh, uh, for the same price. Okay, so 
I know I won't go th through this, but basically what you do is you you call them in the you compute them in ST flow the max flow sorry max flow and then you run a DF you start running DFS on the residual graph every time you get stuck on a cut you just contract those edges and the and you proceed and the claim is that every cut you hit during this linear scanning process every cut is a min cut it's a pretty standard argument right it's, okay so the point is the main point is that the packing problem sometimes can be no more expensive than the, the, the shortest path problem, in which case you're gaining a huge speed up, like root m, right? Okay. So the graph is still directed? Yeah, in general, it's the, I mean, yeah. Uh, again, it's, it's, this, this primitive is for any packing problem, right? Any explicit, so do whatever you want. So as long as you can, again, the, for the general, the general primitive is a min row packing, Problem instead of just min row. So you need to return maximally support this joint. How much time do I have? Uh, five minutes, actually. Okay. Okay. So let me just show you a, a, a nifty, like it's a quick and dirty version of the, the proof. The proof for general capacities is going to be much, or general, yeah, for general concerns is going to be much more involved, so I won't do it. But the proof for unit capacities is going to be super, super, like two line proof. Okay. So Okay, so first of all, what the correctness. I claim that correctness is, is almost trivial. So if we replace the min row oracle with min row packing, or the shortest path with shortest path packing, the correctness of the guard Koningman algorithm or Fleischer's algorithm is preserves exa is preserved exactly. Why? Exactly. What Fleischer will do, what you would do use, use in the decremental algorithm, each time you carve out a short path and you route one unit of flow. Here we're doing all of them in parallel, but I claim it's safe to do that. Why? Because they're edge disjoint, right? And uh, the algorithm only changes the weight along the, the shortest path. So if you do all of them in parallel, you don't lose anything. It's exactly, it simulates exactly the same. They don't interact with each other. Yep. Is everyone happy that correctness is preserved? I guess, would it also work if you have like just a tiny bit? Uh, Good question. Probably, I we haven't thought about it, but it's it's yeah. Maybe this is actually helpful for the capacity version. Yeah. You understand correctly that okay, as soon as you increment by one plus epsilon, you're not in that range anymore, and therefore the next shortest path that you would have to find is one plus parameter. Is that the case? Uh, not this. Okay, um, you mean when the packing call returns and returns this set? What what I'm all I'm saying is that. If you extract the packing as a batch, right, the, the, the MSP oracle returns a, a, a maximally disjoint edge of path. If you route and you implement the multiplicative weight updates in parallel along all these paths at once, you're simulating exactly what the shortest path oracle would have done sequentially. And the reason is that uh, they don't interact with each other. So this is exactly what Garg and Kahneman would, would, would do. Um, they multiply by, by this factor, and therefore it's out of that range. Yeah, after that, it's yeah, it's out of the range. Yeah. Okay, so correctness is, is good. Yeah. So why is the iteration complexity root m instead of m? Okay, so it's a very, uh, for the unit capacity case, very clean proof. So let's look at the first root m iterations of the MSP based algorithm. Okay, so. This is the first packing. So, so this is just the support of the shortest path packing. So what is every red segment? It's a, it's a shortest path. And the MSP returns a packing, right? So it returns, these are just these four, four paths, yeah? So every segment is a path. So maybe the packing returns in the first oracle this path. In the second iteration, it returns this packing. Yes, it's clear every segment is a path returned in the packing of each Maybe the fifth iteration returns this packing. Okay. So there are two cases. If in all first root m iterations, if the support is large, if the packing is at least root m, then we're very happy. Why? Max congestion is small. The, the, we congest edges super fast, right? Because every iteration congests not one edge, it congests root m edges. The support is very large. So we're done after root m iterations as opposed to. M iterations. Why? Because what will be the total congestion after root M iterations? 
every iteration can just root m edges, so the total congestion will be m or m log m, and therefore one edge will be saturated and we're done. Okay? The other case, okay, so, so we terminate in O root m over epsilon squared iteration. In the other case, there exists, I don't know, and this could happen, there, there exists one iteration where the packing returns a very small support. So it's, the shortest path is supported on less than root m edges, okay? But I claim that in this case, we're very happy as well. Why? And here's where we crucially use the maximality. What can you say about all future iterations? They must intersect this packing. This was the definition of the packing oracle, right? Now remember, what does it mean to return a packing? It means that every future path with uh, length in this edge must intersect, in the, in the current epoch must intersect it. So every future iteration is congesting, congesting this tiny, tiny set of root M edges. So one of these edges will get saturated super fast after in another root M iterations. It won't take more than another root M iteration. Is it clear what's going on here? Are we looking at packings, uh, so it's across all commodities at the same time? Or across, uh, or like per, I, I was just getting- Oh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's the point. It's across all commodities. You need to return a set of maximally disjoint set of paths inside the range between any pair. So in the sense that if you have any the you know any any route any feasible yeah, yeah, yeah. demand pair for any commodity if there exists another pet it will intersect this max this yeah, yeah. msp this yep that's it that's that's the proof for the unit capacity case it's a little misleading because for general capacities it gets much more complicated even the definition if you think about maximality is not the same but i have to finish so uh let me just say Okay, so the general capacities case, we pay an extra log ca max capacity for due to some exponential bucketing thing. And when you think of it, even paying log and not linear in max capacity is already was surprising for us. Uh, okay, one minute. Okay. So what's the upshot of the MSP Oracle? The upshot is that it will give you faster runtime for the entire LP if you can implement the packing Oracle faster, like ideally in linear time not much more expensive because you can always implement it decrementally using it, but that resorts back to, to the Madri approach, right? Is it clear that one way to, to implement the MSP Oracle is just decremental? But MSP framework offers you a speed up precisely whenever the packing problem is cheaper than the decremental problem. Yes? So when the batch problem is cheaper than just decrementally doing that, okay? For <laughs> multi-commodity flow, unfortunately, it seems that this is not the case for the, like, for the basic reason that even the, just finding the closest pair among k demand pairs is already requires n squared time or you know, mn time basically for sparse graphs. And this is a reduction by Virginia from, from the uh, shortest path. Okay, so just the problem of finding the closest pair, forget distances, forget reporting, forget routing, just finding the closest pair is already OV hard. Okay, so that seems, like a real barrier, by the way, for improving this using a multi-commodity uh, multi flow using Sherman, uh, using a multiplicative weights approach. Okay, so, however, um, for other network, important network design problems like cage connectivity, which is also a very well-studied problem, which is also stuck on M and time. Okay, I'll do this very fast. Here, there's hope to, get, to actually get uh, uh, M to the 1.5 algorithm. We still don't quite have that, okay? But uh, it's very close. So, the, so in this in this problem, the min row primitive, every row is not a path. It's a Steiner cut, okay? It's a it's a cut, okay? It's a cut separating a set of terminals. And your goal is to report not a single Steiner cut of small value, but a packing, a maximally disjoint set of cuts. So if you remember, Gramos showed us yesterday, or Jason or Gramos, I remember, I, I forget. You wanted, they wanted to pack Steiner trees, right? Jason showed that. Here we want to pack not Steiner trees, but Steiner cuts, okay? So it turns out we can actually do that in linear time, max flow time, and like, and this goes through isolating cuts and fair flows and all, okay, so there's a lot of uh, mess with that. Um, so we can do that for the ST, we can do the packing for ST min cuts, and we can do it for global min cut, but for exact. 
But what we need for them is to be packing to solve the problem is we need to re report approximate, a packing of approximate cuts, right? Because we have, remember the epoch is, reports something in a range. That requires much more work. Uh, and I think I'll stop here. That's, that's uh, all I wanted to say. I just want to say that th the main problem, of course, okay, so find more problems where packing is cheaper than decremental. I think this is a, the obvious question. Another question is Philip's question. Can you improve the current dependency of the MSP iteration from cube to square? That seems hard. I'm not sure it's worth it, but it's, it's definitely a hard question, and it seems doable, okay? Uh, and the, uh, the, the last thing I want to say is that MSP, it works for packing or covering, but it doesn't work for general, we cannot get the speed up for positive general mixed packing covering, okay? And I think this is interesting. All these questions seem doable. Like it's not like some huge barrier. Yeah. Sorry for running over time. Yeah. Oh, thanks a lot to the organizers and. Yeah. Thank you. One quick question, anyone? Well, we got them all answered already. <laughs> yeah. Okay. If it's posted somewhere or not. Uh, it's not posted yet uh, because we wanted the, 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 the Steiner cut application for that, but it will be soon, hopefully. Right. Okay. Show the application on the previous slide again. Uh, oh, the, it's, it, okay, so this was a specific application. It was the uh, K edge connectivity problem, right? So you want to find a terminal se separating uh, subgraph such that every cut, every every Steiner cut, every Steiner cut uh, has a value at least k. Or in other words, every pair has a is k. It's a cage connected subgraph. Okay. So it turns out the min row problem you need to solve for this problem LP is packing not of shortest path but of Steiner trees of approximate min, min Steiner Steiner cuts. Sorry, but you can think about. I think Cyan and you know and and, and Gramos and Jason mentioned various other things over the past week, right? Steiner using this for Steiner trees, uh, matchings, uh, Steiner, you know, maximal matching, maximal Steiner trees, maximal cuts, whatever you want. So it's, it's really very general. So the application is more a question to you all, not to, we just focused on one particular one, uh, application where packing, remember packing needs to be cheaper, as cheap roughly as much cheaper than the decremental problem. Okay, thank you very yeah. much again. Thank you.